Last week, Pimmer only launched Inky Impression. This is the latest in their Inky lineup, which adds e-paper displays to Raspberry Pis. It uses the same 5.7 inch 7 color display that I showed you in my last video, and it integrates directly into their Inky software library as well. The 5.7 inch 7 color display can only show 7 colors at a time, which means that if you want to upload a traditional image, you need to dither it so that you can form different shades of different colors by using just those 7 colors that they offer you. If you saw my last video, we went through how to do that using Photoshop and it was actually a really long winded process and it actually takes quite a bit of time and you can't convert images on the fly, you have to do it in advance. So their Python library should allow you to upload any image whenever you want, it'll automatically do all the conversion for you. So today we're going to get this set up on the Raspberry Pi, they've sent me a Raspberry Pi and a, and a new inky impression board and I cannot wait to get started. Inside the box you'll find the display a pin header extension, some standoffs and some screws. If you're using a standard Raspberry Pi, you'll need the standoffs and the pin header extension to ensure that the display sits above the USB and Ethernet connectors on the side. If you're using a Pi Zero, you don't need these as you can connect the board directly to the display. You can of course buy your own standoffs if you want to keep the display more stable. Along with the display, the guys at Pimeroni have also sent me a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with a fresh Noobs SD card. So the setup that I've got along with this display is a, a fresh Raspberry Pi install with nothing else done to it. The only thing I've done is I've enabled VNC and SSH so that I can remote into it without having to hook up a display and everything. Um, otherwise, everything else you're seeing is a, is a fresh install. So if you look, um, I've got an image ready to go and you'll notice that the resolution of this is 600 by 448, which is the resolution of the display we're using because it'll just make life easier loading an image in that's already the correct resolution. Um, and since those guys did a demo with a pop art image, I've done the same because I thought it looked awesome. Um, and hopefully this one will as well, but we'll find out. Um, so to get started, let's go to the Pimeroni website. Um, at the minute, the inky impression is on the home page, but obviously that might change later on. So um, otherwise just search inky impression and then once there head into the product page and if we scroll down a bit that tells us how to get started so let's copy that I know that you need to enable SPI in order for this to work and I purposefully didn't do it because I wanted to make sure that it was captured on this video but I didn't realize that that script that runs actually enables SPI for you you can see it you can see it highlighted there that that does it for you so that's quite nice um, and then do you want to install yes all examples and documentation I don't actually know where this installs it to I've, I've looked at github I've looked at the at the code that it uses but I have no idea where it puts it Okay, we're done. Some packages could not be installed. Review the output for details. Uh, resources for your inky fat and what were copied to Pimeroni inky. Cool, we're done. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we necessarily need all the packages that have been installed. So let's just let's just crack on and then see what happens. And if something goes wrong, then we can we can try and fix it later on. Um, so if I head into Pimeroni as promised. It's just in there, isn't it? Inky examples, seven color. Uh, let's just let's just do an image. So let's open that. And I guess just run. See what happens. Oh, I see. Oh, it, you, it wants you to run it as um with an image to, 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 yeah, it wants you to run it with an image. Do they, do they include an image? No, let's, let's copy our, our pop art image then and use that and see if we can copy that one in. Let's copy the, our image into that same directory and then um, let's run that as a Pi script from there. So what's that called? Woman, I'm just going to rename it pop art or one word because it's just easier to type in. Python 
image.py and then we want popart.jpg. I think that's right. No. Uh, no such file or directory dev i squared c. Is that because we haven't enabled the i squared c line? Let's check that before we carry on. So let's go to Raspberry Pi configuration and make sure that I squared C and SPI and everything's still turned on. Which is not. So that explains why that's not working. I think, anyway. Okay, let's turn that on. And let's run that again. Um, image show. In show, self update. Discord is our friend. If you haven't checked it out, check out the Pimeroni Discord. And then you also can get updates in, uh, get support in real time. Okay. It says it might be worth trying Python 3. So let's do that. Let's run the same thing again. Pyth but this time run Python 3. It works. There we go. It's a Python. Don't use Python 2, use Python 3. That looks awesome. I don't, I'm not sure if my webcam can entirely do it justice. So I'm going to take a picture and add it to the video so that you can see, but that looks really good. If I go back to, if I go back to the pop art image, just to show you a, like a side by side comparison of that. That's, i say the only thing is it looks a little bit washed out, but it sort of works, I guess, for pop art, which is exactly what the Pimeroni guy said it, it would. Um, that looks awesome. That's incredible. So this, this, this image dot Python script, it basically just takes an image, converts it and then does it. But in fact, he does mention that you can alter the saturation. And in fact, you can see it there as saturation equals whatever. Um, Let's change that to like, I don't know, 0.8 or something. Just, I assume it's out of one. So let's change the saturation level to something a little bit higher. And let's run that again and see what it looks like. Does that look? Oh yeah, that looks way better. This is this is so much better than <laughs> this is so much better than the code that I've got uh, got running. But then again, I, I don't have a I don't have a Cortex A seventy two or whatever it is running on mine. My my code runs on a Cortex M four, so I can't be expected to do all the image processing as well. But it looks amazing. I'm I'm gonna bump the saturation up. I'm gonna bump the saturation up to one, so that it's fully saturated. And let's just see one more time what that looks like um, let's run that one thing that is quite interesting is that you you're supposed to do a clean wipe of the display every time you do an update um, it's not just a white color either so when you select the color that you're going to use on a, on a color or rather on these seven color e-paper displays you you get the choice between red green blue orange yellow black white but they have another color which is called clean and it's specifically supposed to go in between each update. And these guys don't do that, which is something worth considering. I'd be interested to know if it's possible to do that because although it, it, it speeds the updates by half because you're not doing a clean update in the process. But yeah, I wonder if they've got an implementation where you can do that clean update if you're having issues with ghosting and that kind of thing. Um, that looks wrong. <laughs> That saturation all the way up looks like a funny color, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. So this is the actual source code for the Inky library. I guess if we look under library, we should find what we're looking for, Inky. And there you go, Inky, Inky Pi. This, this, this doesn't apply to us. Um, we want, there you go, UC8159. Like I say, that's the controller that the seven color display runs on. And yes, they do. They do have an option for cleaning it. So I guess if you if you wanted to send, 
I'm assuming that they have a script. We'll look in a sec. I'm assuming they'll have some sort of script where you can send raw data to the display rather than relying on some of the image processing libraries that you can get on Python. Um, but in that case, you could send a clean, a clean slate if you like. Um, what else have we got on here? Sets the resolution, sets the inky driver, and then I guess it just initializes it with, with all the configuration that it needs. So this is, oh, here we go. So here's the panel settings. Oh, nice. This is really interesting. You can edit a load of this stuff. You shouldn't. What e ink gives is fine. This is a as an all-in-one display. You don't need to be editing any of this stuff. But it's it's interesting that you can if you want to. Um, and then that's all the update stuff as well. This is really interesting. If we if we jump back to this, ah, they have a clear dot, a clear script. I didn't see that. There we go. So you it sets the pixels there. That's really interesting. Cool. Well, I love that. Let's run a clear on it and, and then run, let's run a clear followed by that image again. Um, and run that. There you go. You can see a clean. It doesn't act. It doesn't fully clear the image, but it it sort of just puts the pixels in, or like each of the particles inside those capsules, in such a way that it shouldn't leave a ghosted image behind. It's sort of hard for us to tell what we're doing here because we're not we're not changing the image every time. But if we change the image every single time, you would start to notice the previous image is sort of still there. And if you do it enough times, you can you can wreck the display. You end up with a permanently ghosted image. Um, so I have not I have a display that has exactly that on it, just because I kept on updating it over and over again without a clean in between. That looks awesome. Absolutely love that. I guess it's a case of just playing around with the saturation levels and the images that you can use and that kind of thing. But otherwise, that script that's that we looked at initially, you've obviously got the clear script, um, but the image image script there is absolutely awesome for for loading in images. Um, one final thing to look at, I guess, is if you're going to be using this in a project as far as like a calendar or that kind of thing, you aren't going to be showing images over and over again. You need to be looking at things like text and all sorts of things so that you can you can generate these images over time rather than just picking a JPEG and saying here display this every single time. Um, so I guess not advanced. I know that there's the they've included the functionality to make a web page to display a web page on it and I'm quite interesting to see. And we just need to install this. And we're done. Okay, let's give it a run. What does it say? It says run HTML.sh. Let's have a quick look at that. Ah, okay, so it uses so it uses a Firefox script basically to to generate that image and then it saves it as an as an image. It saves it as a screenshot image and then loads it in as well. So that's quite interesting. Let's give that a run. Let's go to HTML. And then what are we running? We're running HTML.sh and then hello world. You are running in headless mode. Oh, there we go. Well, that is awesome. If that's not the easiest thing I've ever done, then I don't know what is. So if you can make a web page out of your project, then you can display it on a on a color display, on a color, seven color e-ink display. That is absolutely awesome. Let's have a look, quick look at the web page. Oh, wow. So that's the actual, that's the actual web page. Um, if we look at the source of that, it's just, really basic HTML and CSS to create that so 
I am blown away. I'm going to need to find something to do with it. I need to make a project that has a color, a seven color display. As of yet, I have no idea what it is, but at least this can take images and that kind of thing and text and all, all kinds of different things and just display exactly what you want to. Cool. Love it. I want to say a big thank you to the guys at Pimeroni for not only sending me the display, but also a Raspberry Pi so I can get everything up and running nice and quickly. I think it looks absolutely insane. The, the Python scripts behind it with the dithering of the images and particularly the turning a web page into something that can be displayed on the e-ink display. I think that's that's absolutely incredible. That opens up a world of, of possibilities for, for what we can do with this. Um, like I say, I hope I can find a project soon that I can do something with this because this is way cooler than the code that I've done on mine. Um, but like I say, I'm running mine on a Cortex M4 in a more production environment and that kind of thing. So um, yeah, but I'm absolutely insane. If you like the video, then leave a like. Be sure to subscribe for more. I've got a few more projects coming in the next week or so that, um, that should be quite interesting. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.